Okay, I'm back at the, the Westville uh, Cemetery. I'm testing out a new camera. It's kind of kind of beautiful out here. Yeah, this is a totally totally new camera. And yeah, I was just sitting here on this log. Yeah, I really wanted to test out this camera. It's picking up all kinds of noises. It uh, records in stereo. So you should have a real interesting sound. It should be on your left side talking to you. It's a little breezy, but... Yeah, I really wanted a good place to test out this camera. Of course, you got a little junk pile going here. It's, <clears throat> it's been a while since I've uh, done any kind of investigating. I'm hoping this, ca this camera works. I think, I hope it's working. Is it? Hello. One, two, testing. Yep, it's working. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a... It's like a very small screen on this camera. If there's any spirits out here that want to talk, you can talk into this microphone here. But down there, that's Blake Street Cemetery. That's where the city of New Haven buried all the poor people. Uh, most of them are just numbers. Kind of a shame that they're uh, in that condition. But one day, uh, <coughs> once I get in good with the uh, church that we are kind of like going to be members of, we're going to, uh, you know, see if we can get work crews. People have volunteered their time to uh, clean up cemeteries and other places. And I really like to straighten out all those stones there. I mean, a lot of them were neglected, some were, were sunken down. But yeah, I do have a list of all the names, it's in one of my other videos. But yeah, it's like a real poor cemetery. And this camera I'm using, I can record up to, says about 10 hours. But I'm not going to be out here for 10 hours, not yet. Yeah, it's totally weird, it's like a really lightweight camera. It's made for, yeah, record, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, the kind, if you want to uh, bootleg a concert, this is the camera to do it with. Yeah, in the background, I don't know if you can see it. That's West Rock. We still have to go there. We haven't gone there yet because, uh, yeah, members of my team are sick, injured. Two might be deployed. <coughs> and over there, yeah, that's a Jewish cemetery. Like a 
property line. And yeah, when they came out here, there was a, I did see a dark shadow running around. This camera should be picking up some real nice audio. But I'm gonna have to turn it down when I edit. Uh, somebody said uh, you could probably hear a mouse fart. I mean, that'd be interesting to see if it could pick that up. I mean, I've gotten some great responses out here in Necrophonic. Yeah, I didn't bring my Bluetooth speaker with me though today. Yeah, I'm just like wandering around here. Oh, it's a reverend. Sacred to the memory of Reverend James Lawrence Willard and Dee Dee, pastor of the Westville Congregational Church. 68 years and 8 months. He died in office January 7th, 1894 at age 68 years. And I guess his wife, Victorian H. Willard, died June 28th, uh, 1906 <clears throat> at age eight, 89 years. Pasture. Yeah, they're buried like right here. I try to move this camera slowly. I'm just walking today. I'm not probably not even going to bring out any equipment. This is uh, just a field test uh, with this camera. I've been wanting to do one for a while. But yeah, you know, I've, I've been busy and with all the things going on. I just haven't had the urge to go out and do investigations. I mean, our little paranormal community has become like really divided. There's a lot of good investigators on both sides. I mean, you know, there's a lot that I still follow in a way, but yeah, I look in their live streams, and in some places it's like it's like walking on eggshells for me. Yeah, you should be able to hear me crunching on the uh, the twigs they haven't cleaned up yet. Yeah, this here is a like very ornate stone. It's kind of sad that it's in, in that condition. That belongs to Elahu Ngorom. He died 18, yeah, July 8th, 1863 at age, uh, yeah, age 64. Or 50, was it 50? No, it's 54. Yeah, that looks, yeah, that, yeah, it could either be a 5 or, 
the six. It's really hard to tell. Well, actually, yeah, it looks like a six now that I look away. No, it's a, yeah, he's 54. And his wife died March 3rd. Eighteen sixty-two, uh, age uh, fifty-two. That's pretty interesting, right there. It's a very ornate stone, but kind of flaws in it. Yeah, I would love to come out here and write it. I put it back up here where it belongs, but. Yeah, it's too heavy for me. But yeah, that would, it would be kind of cool to do. We'd have to borrow a little crane or something. Set it back up. And have to put special kind of cement in it to reinforce it. Or just totally reconfigure the base. But yeah, that's the Jewish part of the cemetery, just like the dividing line. I forgot the name of it, but there's like five, at least four or five cemeteries scattered around here. Oh yeah, this is sort of like the marginal line. Of course, the, uh, the Jews have their little, I'm not even sure what they're called, <laughs> but yeah, we don't have any of those in this side. And any spirits that want to communicate can, you know, talk to me right now. nice it takes uh, two AA batteries so I got like a stockpile of Duracells because the uh, rechargeable batteries if you leave them in your equipment <coughs> for too long they, they just drain on their own they won't do that <laughs> I do have a wind thing for, uh, for this camera but yeah, I just want to walk around here. <clears throat> I do need a little exercise. This, this cemetery is real convenient and the bus stops right in front of its entrance. But this is one I you know, tested. A lot of equipment that. Probably test some more equipment later. But I really just wanted to come out here with this camera. And uh, take some, uh, take a video. I just heard something walk up to me. I don't see anything. Yeah, you know, the camera might pick up something.
I'm actually out here with a blessed rosary. So I, I'm pretty good right now. But yeah, this is just a little peaceful walk in the cemetery. And I'm just trying to see uh, what the camera picks up. I got it you know, down a little bit low. Not straight out in front of me. The spirit should probably talk to me easier if I had further away from my body I had it. So I got it almost at arm to me. Anyone that wants to communicate with me can talk, talk through this. Yeah, I forgot my Bluetooth speaker, so it's like, I, yeah, I did halfway want to do a necrophonic session. Well, I might tr just try to do it without. But this part, yeah, this cemetery doesn't have any benches or anything, so that's it. you have to make do with what you can get. There goes an ambulance somewhere. It's kind of like Jewish memorial over there. I think it's Jewish. But yeah, I might want to go see sometime. But not today. <clears throat> I think some spirits might hang out over there. Oh yeah, it is a beautiful cemetery. Yeah, they try, at least try to keep it worked on, but, you know, three branches fall, things happen, and Yeah, you should be hearing car sounds on your right side. I think I've done a necrophonic here at this part of the cemetery. I'm pretty sure I have. This is where I picked up a lot of activity. But if any spirit wants to talk, I have a microphone here with me. That will allow me to hear you when I listen to this later. That's a weird, weird one, the way they have that set up. It's very hard to read the name. Johnson married Monson. I don't know if it's Chaz or what the name is. 
see Johnson and his wife, uh, Eliza Lonson, 1854 to 1916. Oh yeah, it's really hard to read that name. See, a yeah, very nice cemetery. I kind of like it. It's not, yeah, this was where I did my first uh, cemetery investigation. Must have been two... I had it about two years ago. I had time flies, and I said, you know, I'm going out today. No matter what, I'm going to go out. letting the camera absorb sounds. If I could see the screen. Let me look. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. It's still, I think it's still recording. I think this is the only first time a, a Zoom, yeah, Zoom Q2 and camera has been used on a paranormal investigation because they usually go for either, yeah, their cell phones, <coughs> which are iPhones, which I don't like, uh, or, you know, their Samsungs, usually Galaxy or one of the other ones. But this is a real camera. And they have a newer model. That has uh, 4K. I think, uh, this is high definition. I can uh, change the field if I want to. What it's looking at. It's got, I can do fisheye. I can do all kinds of other things with it. But yeah, this is a nice camera. It cost me around, yeah, 200. But you know, it was worth it for what I'm going to be doing with it. They, yeah, let it run until it runs out of battery power. I don't know what the battery, how long a normal battery will last on it. But I'm, you know, testing it out. Yeah, I'm looking for a nice spot where I can set up equipment and maybe talk to this wandering spirit. They got some great EVPs out here. Some of these people, yeah, they, they've been forgotten. Yeah, oh, James E. Merriman, 1915, or no, 1815 to uh, 1879. 
And his wife was named Charlotte. Charlotte J. Braddock. 1888. No, 1838. 1905. Yeah, slightly older woman. Wow, he was... She was like 16 years at least older than he was. Maybe more than that. She was definitely older. That's interesting. And this camera does have a zoom on it. And I'm not going to use it right now. I just want to see how it does on just its normal normal settings. Yeah, it's really beautiful. You know, I like it in this spot. Yeah, that's where I set up my equipment before. Yeah, some stones got toppled. Yeah, my cell phone's a little bit low in battery power, but I think I can use it. Okay, any spirits that want to communicate with me, please do so. I'm going to turn on this device for you and see if you can hear it. Hello. Hello, spirits. Do you want to talk to me? Does anyone want to talk to me today? Yeah, it's supposed to start getting more, more and more windy. Does anyone want to talk to me out here? Yeah, it's kind of windy, isn't it? Why are you gone? Where are you going? Hello?
Can you talk to me? You can say anything you want. Hello. Yeah, it's David. Does anyone want to talk about God or anything? Do you want to talk? It's good to talk to you. I haven't been out here in a long time. Yeah, it's a little dry out here. Do you want rain? Do you want it to rain? We want it to rain, right? I don't know when it's going to rain. I don't know. It might be a few more days before you get any rain. Hello. Yeah, you you're talking. Yeah, you're talking to David. Is any do uh, any do any children want to talk to me? That's the, that's the girl that was looking for Nancy Bates. Is she here? Uh, is my friend Hensley Hensley around? Yeah. He, Anybody know where Hensley is? I want to talk to that one girl. The one that said Nancy Bates. Sorry about that. I 
Okay, we're back. Hello. Yeah, it's David. Ah, oh, there you are, Hensley. How are you? Are you looking for Beth? It's been a while since I talked to Beth. Good to hear your voice, Hensley. Yeah, Hensley's one of the older spirits here. He travels around, he visits people that do live necrophonic sessions. And of course, you had to drop in and say a word on my video here. Well, come over and talk to me, Hensley. What? Sit right, sit right next to me. Yeah, you know, this spirit named Hensley has been on probably everybody's necrophonic session. Yeah, anyone that does a necrophonic session on YouTube has Hensley drop in and talk. I wasn't the first one he, he talks to. I found some old videos that were before my time. And yeah, Hensley did talk on them. But he seems to like all the people I hang out with on YouTube. You know, God will forgive you of any of your sins. All you have to do is ask. Call, don't be afraid to call out to God. There's no sin that cannot be forgiven. Okay, I'm going to stop the necrophonic session, I think. Uh, thank you, spirits. Do not attach to anything. Don't attach to me. Now, how do you turn this off again? Yeah, they changed it quite a bit. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I just couldn't see the red start. Thank you for communicating with me. And thank you uh, for visiting with me, Hensley. Yeah, there is an actual spirit named Hensley. Uh, some young girl... Uh, Spirit called out his name and he answered. So that's that's how I know his name. And for a while he liked uh, Beth. Adventures with Beth. <laughs> He'd like show up in live streams where she usually hung out and call her name.
they're gonna do another do a little bit more walking then uh I'm gonna pack this little camera back up but you'd be surprised how small it is it's uh it's kind of uh it's a little bit small it's kind of smaller than the Klondike bar but it looks like a mic yeah it looks like a big microphone with a little lens on it but it's you know it's a pretty powerful camera it's supposed to be But yeah, I did it with low on battery power in my phone. But at least I uh, had, had the honor of Hensley dropping in on me. And it is an honor and a privilege to be uh, visited by a very active spirit that loves going to different places and talking on necrophonic sessions. I said, yeah, this is a great honor. But usually he'll say just one or two words unless he's looking for Beth and they'll call her name out a few times and just, I don't know what happens, he just goes silent. I'm trying to be very careful how I walk. Cemetery's a real nice place, I think. It's not a bad little cemetery. But yeah, I'm hoping this camera works. Yeah, I should could like get a halfway wish I could get a job fixing up cemeteries. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad job actually. Yeah, Rudolph. Mjolf. 1859 to 1928. And his wife, Marie E. Musler. Oh, maybe it is Musler. Oh, maybe it's Musler. 1858 to 1928. God, they both died the same year. They were almost a matched pair. He was just like a year older. They both died, I don't know about the dates exactly, but it was the same year. They could have died at the same time. They could have died a few months apart. In 1928, yeah, there were things happening here. A little investigation inside here. That this little joint would be hopping. They got chimney there, and yeah, it was some kind of maintenance shack at one time. Probably still is. I wouldn't know how to get into it though. <laughs> I 
I'm not even gonna try. I'm sure there's a way to do it. There's a little trick on getting in here. Hey, right. I just put a couple of sheets of plywood in. Hey, that'd be a cool place to do a little investigation. I mean, so kind of like paranormal lockdown. Okay, are you still recording? Hello. Okay, I think you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm still seeing uh, the bars go, go back, you know, higher and lower for the microphone. So it's picking up signals. It should be on record. I think it stops the same way it starts. I'm hoping it recorded something, but I, I don't know. I'll just walk around for a few minutes. Yeah, if this film didn't come out, a video, uh, then I just didn't, then I wasn't recording. But yeah, it's a new camera. It's just the first time I've had it out. Well, my friend Ancient was supposed to test it, but well, he had some real serious health problems. Still very serious. But I've got my own. My, you know, I've got a problem with my back. Right, here we go. Beautiful cemetery. George E. R. Bradley. No, George Bradley. Okay. George R. Mary M., his wife, and uh, I guess George M. Bradley. I guess he was the son. He didn't live long. He's like uh, 1894 to 1895. Or six. Yeah, it looks like a six, eighteen ninety six. So, yeah, George was born eighteen fifty nine, died nineteen fifteen. His mayor, his wife. 1863 or 1954 and had George here and he died uh, like 1890, 1896 you know he was a year old all three of them are buried right here and you got you still have pine cones on, on the ground I'm, yeah, I'm tired of pine cones. And we have a first, I think, dandelion right here. Uh, 
don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little dandelion right there. Yeah, yeah, this camera would probably work better at night. Yeah, I'm working on pine cones. <coughs> Oh, that's a crunchy one. Crunching up pine cones. you here. Yeah, I just moved uh, this over to this grave, this, to, uh, the Smith family. So it was on the ground in front of them. So we have uh, Frank I. Bourdon, or no, Bogdan. Nineteen thirty two. Guess when he died and his wife Margaret Oh, uh, she must have been the Smith that married a Bodon uh or Bo Bogdan. She died in 1919. There was Samuel W. Oh, he might still be alive. Nineteen sixty-five. That's weird. That is definitely weird. Let's see the date nineteen sixty-five. Huh. I don't know. I'm not really getting any... I'm not really reading anything. <laughs> It'd be nice to restore the cemetery a little bit. Put a little love into it for a day. It's definitely not abandoned, it's, it's still in use. Uh, there's people that have like, recently died that are here. And there goes the bus, so I got another 20, 30, at least 20 minutes to catch another bus. I'm not in a hurry right now. It's, I can actually walk part way to where I have to go. It would be just nice to hop on the bus. Oh, there's Shumway over there. He's got uh, got a big ball on his uh, on his tombstone. And we actually have a farmer, James K. Farmer. October 7th, 1928 to October 8th, 1883. So he died pretty close to his birthday. Yeah, it'd be, yeah, somewhere like in the 60s at least, I think. Then we have Susan S. His wife, April 1842, May 20th at 1904. That's another one, a young one. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, April 22nd, 1842, well he died, in, well he was born in 28, so he was about 20 years older than she was. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, I guess it did happen back then. Yeah, love knows very few boundaries. And we have uh, here John J. Simpkins, September 14, 1887. The February 28, 1917, and his wife, uh, Dinah Couch. October 6, 1840, to January 23rd, 1917. So, they died pretty close to each other. She died, yeah, a few days after he did. And then there was Frank, uh, their son. January 29th, 1867 to November 27th, 1894. And it was Susan M. Simpkins. She was married to uh, William E. Hall. So January 18th, 1875 to September 26th. 1932 and looks like they had infant children John, Helen, and Belise. That's a sad one. Infant children John, Helen, and Belise. Does that mean they all? It's weird. And we have a memory of Susan. Okay, I think we're back. Hello. One, two, testing one, two. Yeah, it might be a little bit lower, but, uh, yeah, we're back. Uh, the battery actually died on this camera. Yeah, it'll, it'll last a long time if it's hooked up to a power pack, but on batteries, it doesn't last too long. So, we have uh, Elizabeth A. Fenton, 1864 to 1932. And they had George F. Bailey, 1864 to 1902. There was Susan, uh, she was the wife of David Simpkins, he died 1890, and he died like 1900, but yeah, that is kind of interesting stone right there. Okay, one, two. That screen kind of went a little bit dark. Oh, it did that on purpose or what? And there's a chip. We have uh, William S. Chip, T H I P P, a uh, born 1847, died 1901, and they had Sarah Pierce. His wife, uh, 1854 to 1941. And it was Edward W. Uh, 1878, 1882. And it was Alice, 1890 to 1901. So they
Yeah, my back is starting to bother me a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to come out real and you know, test out this camera. And actually, I've got two tests accomplished. How long I can record for and how quickly I can change batteries. So that's it. Uh, we'll come back and I'll come back at a later time and date. And once I test out and see how this camera works. Well, catch you all of you later.